Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. Down here in the dungeon, and I hope the start of your day is amazing. I know my day is amazing because look at that clutch of eggs right there. Ooh, doggy. And I tell it, I know you guys are enjoying me collecting snake eggs, but what you really want is egg cutting. And we're here, that's right. We're ready for the first eggs of the year. How exciting is that? A brand new razor blade that I am about to open right now. And uh, we are about to commence on the first snake egg cutting of the year. I know you guys are excited. You've been waiting for this. Uh, we'll be cutting a lot of clutches this year. So we're working on some new techniques. I want to know down below what you think of this kind of new generation of cutting. Hopefully we can take it to the next level, that immersion of the experience where you feel like you're cutting the eggs. And you may ask, uh, what eggs are we cutting first? You guys may remember the first clutch of the year, and it was this girl here, the genetic strike. Guess what? If you guess that we have our first ball python clutch you guess right <laughs> that's right it's actually this girl right here of course a genetic striped ball python and she was bred to this absolutely beautiful banana g stripe male here whoo doggy that thing is amazing so what do you guys say that we go ahead and find out what the babies are going to look like so what do you say we just go ahead and jump into it officially 2020 egg cutting season is about to begin and of course because this is a g stripe to g stripe everything should be g stripe so we should only get g stripes and banana G stripes, which are ridiculous. Let's go ahead and see what this first one is. Woo. And right off the rip, guys, we've got a surprise. <laughs> That's right. So this is really bizarre. This is a pastel G stripe. So I figured it was a G stripe to a banana G stripe, so we get all either genetic stripes or banana genetic stripes. And right off the rip, we get this beautiful pastel genetic stripe, meaning that the male had to be a pastel banana G stripe, which is cool because now we got another gene we didn't even expect. And these guys are rippers. So there it is, guys, the first egg of the season. Let's just keep going and see what else we got. And number two, what do we have here? Oh my, God, I am so excited, guys. You have no idea how amazing this is. And oh my gosh. This is, oh, it's so good to be cutting eggs again. This is actually a banana G-stripe, possibly a pastel banana G-stripe, because again, we got pastel in there. But look at the purples in there, unbelievable. I tell you what, banana G-stripes are absolutely incredible, and I am so excited that we have one in here, and uh, let's just jump on to egg number three. Here we go, egg number three. Let's see what we got in this little monkey right here. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. Let's see what we got. Okay, uh, wow, that's interesting. This is another pastel G-stripe, but it's a really, really beautiful one. There's a chance, I gotta take a closer look here to be totally honest with you, because uh, it's so light. You almost wonder if it is a banana. I just have to get a little bit more of a cut here to see if I can see a little bit better. And here we go, let's see. Just get a little bit better look at this monkey right here. No, and that's definitely a pastel G-stripe, but it's a really, really reduced pattern one and super light. So that thing is gonna be a ripper. And these guys should be climbing out of the eggs within the next probably two or three days, uh, which makes me wonder, should I do an egg hatching cam? Last year it was a little bit tricky. I've got some ideas on it. Maybe I'll go back to that. We'll see what's going on. In the meantime, let's move on to egg number four. Here we go. What will we have in this egg? Oh, I tell you, that is such a good feeling, isn't it? This is just a G-stripe. So this is the first one that's not a pastel, but its striping looks so good. You know, sometimes G-stripes can almost have like a motley pattern where they're broken saddles and stuff like that. This has got a perfect dorsal striping to it. Whew. I tell you, that's a beauty. One more egg to go. And last egg, I tell you what, this has been so exciting. I've been waiting a long time for this, guys. That's for sure, and I know you have too. And there it is, another banana G-stripe. Ooh, doggy, I tell you what, these are some rippers. It's so cool to finally be having some egg cutting. Uh, beautiful snakes. We knew they were all gonna be G-stripes. We got a little surprised that there's a pastel G-stripe in there. And these banana G-stripes could be pastel banana G-stripes. I'm not sure until they climb out of the egg. So again, let me know in the comments what you think of this new style of egg cutting. If you like it, what can we improve on? Also, let me know if you want me to do an egg hatching camp where you guys could watch these eggs hatch in a camera. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll do it. We'll see what happens. But uh, uh, there it is, guys. Officially, 2020's egg cutting season is happening. Hi, everybody. We actually have a little bit of uh, spare time on our hands today. So um, I, 
I've been really, really wanting to sort of push my boundaries a little bit with uh, with Beetlejuice. So I, as, I, as always, I have Jessica here to help me out a little bit. Um, she is definitely the best lizard catcher in the world. So if things go awry, she'll be a really, really good backup for me. Very, very still. Thank you, Jessica. All right, you go ahead and take that. So we're gonna lay, we're actually gonna save the last two. I'm gonna calm them down kind of like how I do chicken strip. I'm just gonna let them feed through my hand and sort of let them do his thing. But I wanna keep him on my hands because I know the moment he gets on my shoulder, or gets up high, he's gonna find right up here. So he's gonna definitely try and get away from me as best he can. You guys may not be see it, but you'll definitely see it afterwards once we're done with him. You know, my hands will be bloodied and, and very, very, very scratched because he has very, very sharp, sharp, tiny little claws. Just trying to get up high and eventually he'll slow down just like Chicken Strip does. And it's mainly kind of a, somewhat of a fear response. Like usually a lot of times our monitors sort of freeze up on you. It's typically, typically a sign that they're just like, all right, maybe if I sit still, they'll just leave me alone. You gonna be good for me? Let's try. Good boy. You're a good boy. It's okay. Look, that's just my hand. That's just my hand. Good boy. It's okay. So if you're, you see that he's not, he doesn't like it. And when it really comes down to if I want an animal that's going to be handleable, I want an animal that, that can can take a little bit of an annoyance. You ready? You ready to go inside? I bet you are. All right. Very calmly. Let's go back in here. I'm going to let you go on your own. Here you go. I'm leaving this pinky right here because as you can see, he's hiding from us right now. So uh, it, it's it's obvious, like I said, this isn't like that particular interaction was it the 100% best. Obviously you saw him run off you, though we did have to catch him. We have to sort of manhandle him a little bit. But I'm going to leave him that cute little pinky right there as you guys saw. Hopefully, meaning that he, he picks that up and goes, I did good. Yeah, this is a reward I got. So I'm hoping he figures that out. Now he's a smart enough animal, I give him credit for that. Guess what guys, turns out it was a banana pastel G-stripe. So for some reason I thought it was just a banana G-stripe, but it turns out it was a banana pastel G-stripe. So now everything makes sense. And now back to that spinner female around that beautiful clutch eggs. Ooh, doggy, that is a lot of eggs right there. And she was bred to a ripper male. This little monkey right here, which is a silver streak bamboo. I tell you what, that thing is incredible. I mean, look at the color on that one. Bred to a spinner, there's gonna be some ripper babies. So let's just go ahead and pull this clutch. <laughs> I cannot believe the size of this clutch. Okay, mama, you did so good, sweetheart. Oh my gosh, is this gonna be the record for the year? Is there a chance that this could be 12 or plus more eggs? It's possible. That's a lot of eggs right there. They, they don't even fit in the egg box. We have one, whoa, mama, whoo. We have one more egg here, and this is a fresh egg. I mean, you could tell she just laid it. Ooh, mama is not happy with me. And like I said, they don't even fit in the nest box. So let's go ahead and see. We've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 11 eggs. We didn't hit that 12 number, but that's all right. That is incredible. What a great day. We get to pull some clutches of eggs. We get to cut snake eggs. Uh, it's awesome. Oh, and we do still have one more clutch of ball pythons to pull. Next clutch of ball pythons. We just have this really pretty normal female. And oh, look at the little slugger right on the top there. Don't bite me, girl. Don't bite me. It's okay. But she's really a pretty animal. And a lot of the kind of normal females that we have, we've always kept as what we would call, you know, just dinker projects, right? So they're not real normals. And we're hoping there's something more to them because they were just really beautiful as babies and thought, well, let's raise up and see if there's something genetic going on. So we'll see what's going on with this. This girl actually was bred to a Pastavi orange dream. So that's a pastel, it's a Mojave, and it's an orange dream. So there should be some room. Oh, come on, girl, it's okay. Let's get these eggs, come on. Come on, mama, I know you're just trying to protect your eggs. You're a good mama, I really do appreciate you. And then, of course, one last egg right here. And we'll get these eggs in this box right now. Of course, we're gonna have to take the top eggs off because the box won't close, but we got two, four, six good eggs. One little slugger, not bad. I mean, the eggs are piling up. That means lots more egg cutting going on. I hope that you guys are gonna enjoy the season of all that egg cutting. Again, in the comments, let me know how you felt about today's. We're working hard to try to bring you the coolest egg cutting that we possibly can. All you gotta do is pull it. I literally have one hand and I'm trying. 
just a little thing that I made up here. You know, I got that uh, that vacuum that actually sucks water out, but it actually drains. So we have a drain tile right here, which is just basically a drain in the floor. So I made this with my friend Steve Bashy. He cut this out for me. I took a piece here, glued it on, uh, put some kind of ceiling in here, uh, some wing nuts to kind of adjust here. So let's hope this works. Basically what happens is this just pops onto here. And then that's on there pretty tight now. Now I can actually get the hose and I just clamp it on here. Hose goes on here, clamps in place like this. And now all the drain water that's hooked up to the pump over there just drains right into the drain tile. I can drain every water in the place with that vacuum and it goes right into here and uh, it works out perfect. So uh, yeah, just a little hack there. I know it's not super exciting, but uh, I was excited about it because I think it's gonna make our life that much easier. Just going, guess what time it is? Uh, is it Kluber time? Yeah, what time is it? Time to get this camera out of my face. Beth, guess what yeah. time it is? Kaluber egg time. That's right, it is Kaluber egg time. And we're actually gonna start with a het snow scaleless corn snake. So it's this little monkey right here. See what she has. Oh, she's got some eggs kind of rolled all over the place. We'll see what she's got going on. But she's bred to this snow scaleless, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. But let's see how many eggs we actually have here. Again, she kind of rolled them all over the place. Doesn't look like there's a bunch of good eggs, unfortunately. Looks like we've got one egg, one slug. We got one egg here. See, definitely one more here. Boy, this is a really small clutch and not very fertile at all. There's uh, three good eggs and two slugs. So five eggs total out of that clutch. Definitely not a banger of a clutch there, but still, you never know. We could produce three scaleless snows and that would be pretty awesome. Interestingly enough, this next clutch is a het strawberry snow scaleless, but it's just bred to the same thing, a het strawberry snow scaleless. So it wasn't the scaleless snow male. So hopefully this clutch will have more fertility. Oh my gosh, this is not a good day, guys. Woo. I tell you what, some days you win and some days you lose. Today, we definitely lost. It's okay, mama. And you can really tell when a snake doesn't lay good eggs. Look at how she doesn't even look like she had any egg production at all. You know, because good eggs take a lot out of them. Bad eggs seem to not take much out of females. And literally, it looks like we've got two good eggs in this clutch and the rest are slugs. Now, I will tell you through experience that oftentimes when you have two four, six, eight slugs and two good eggs. These two eggs oftentimes don't hatch. So I don't have high hopes for this clutch. Uh, I tell you what, that's just the way it goes. Some days you have great days, some days you have bad days. Today was not a good colubrid egg day at all. But it's like I always tell you guys, I'm gonna take you on the entire journey. You know, I'm not gonna show you just good colubrid egg clutches. I'm gonna show you when we have bad days like this. And uh, that's just the way it goes. With that being said, that wraps up colubrid eggs for the day. Let's move on to something more positive. And now that we have the the hose hooked up to the drain over there. Uh, of course, Ivy gave me the perfect opportunity to jump in there and clean her up. Uh, she always keeps me working, but at least now the work will be a little bit easier. That is just always a wild experience getting in with her because she's so curious. I'll be honest with you, when she's climbing up to me like that, it's a little freaky. I, I, I think I know what she's thinking, but I'm not 100% sure. This is one thing I think that did come out of this is that I need to get in the water at some point and just chill with her. Let her do whatever she wants to do. Just sit there, swim around with her a little bit, and let her come up to me and explore. Because uh, I think that's the only way we're going to know what her true intentions actually are. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do that, and I'll, I'll make sure to make that happen. The first of many egg cuttings for this year. I'm excited to share the entire experience with you guys. If you want, here is a playlist of last year's egg cutting for you to enjoy. Could you do me a favor? Support my podcast channel right up here. You can subscribe. It's called Checking In. On this side, you can subscribe to this vlog channel. I appreciate if you turn the post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.